I'm already seeing a problem. Oh, don't give me problems, I just need this done. Oh, that's a good one. That's, yeah. So this bad boy can go in here. Confident. Like it's not your first build, you know? And now we can push this button. <gasps> I've flown DJI drones and I've flown binder flies, but I've always avoided building my own. And here's why. If something broke, I wouldn't be able to fix it. I'll be grounded for weeks waiting for parts, and honestly, I've never really learned how to build one of my own from start to finish. So I decided to change that. I'm going to be building my first FPV drone. But where do you start? FPV is a rabbit hole. The parts list is endless, and every choice depends on five other choices. So instead of guessing, I asked ChatGPT to build the thing for me. Every part, every component, the full spec. This is the drone AI thinks I should fly. Let's see how this goes. If you're anything like me and thinking about building your first FPV drone, the parts list can be really overwhelming. What flight controller do I buy? What size motors do I get? Will they all fit in the frame? Are they even compatible? Easy for gazzy, it's a wazzy, it's a woozy, it's a... FPV is super custom, and if you're new, honestly, it's really intimidating. <laughs> now, I could have Googled it, but that would have been hours of reading forum posts back to 2017. And I could have asked my friends, but they're busy with work or they'll just send me some parts lists. So I did the next best thing. I asked ChatGPT. The plan was simple. Give it a challenge and let it design everything from scratch. I told it what batteries I have, that I wanted DJI 04 system, and instead of spitting out a random parts list, they actually asked me questions. Do I want 4S or 6S? Freestyle or cinematic? ELRS or Crossfire? It was like my own FPV technician. And honestly, I haven't even considered half of these questions. There's no one size fits all drone. Freestyle isn't long range and long range isn't freestyle. So after some back and forth with ChatGPT, yes, I named her Lily, I settled on a five inch freestyle build. And if I learn how to build it, I can finally fix my own drones too. Lily gave me a full parts list, but I needed everything from vendors that shipped to Cyprus. So I trimmed the list and checked stock and swapped a few things. Because of course, FPV stock is absolute chaos. Now I already had some batteries and tools at home and last year I bought a basic kit from Amazon. Soldering iron, wire strippers, hobby knife, ChatGPT filled in the gaps with consumables I didn't think of, so Loctite, heat shrink, flux, lipo straps. And before buying anything, I sent the parts list to my friend Sergey just to give the final okay. He made a couple of tweaks, but overall, ChatGPT did pretty well. So I added everything to my basket, placed the order, and now we wait. Four to six weeks later. All right, so I have all the parts here. It's very echoey in here, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, that's the problem with this place. All right, so I have all the parts here and I have my friend, Sergey, also known as Skip to FPV. He's built drones before, but he's not building this one. He's here only to stop me from blowing anything up. With the power of editing, I've changed the board, but this is the toolkit that I'm working with today. Sergey, is this toolkit any good for someone starting out building a FPV drone, is it enough? So I believe for the start that this is a good toolkit. Like you have everything you need, like a set of screwdrivers, uh, the solder iron, like the other, like you have a lot of stuff here, I would say, yeah. Okay. That's so gonna be enough. Well, I'm guessing we'll find out if anything's bad or doesn't work. <laughs> no. So there is a few consumables that I couldn't get, like flux, because they just won't deliver that. But Sergey has some backups, I believe, right? Just in case. Just in case and bring everything you need to build okay. it on. So I have most things. It's probably like a couple of things because of international shipping issues. Right, before we start building, I actually have one more decision to make. I have a Crossfire and ELRS receiver. Now, if you have been following my channel, you know that I'm a TBS Tango 2 Pro guy. I love my Crossfire, Crossfire for life. <laughs> but my friends have been preaching about ELRS. So, Sergey, 
if which receiver do you think I should be putting in to this drone? Well, that's a good question uh, because Crossfire is still good. That's true, no problem with that. But these days, most of the people start work with the ELRS because modern system they have a lot of a lot of new features and it's also reliable these days, the same as its Crossfire. And I think you should try ELRS. Yeah, that's that's gonna be a cool. Yeah. Okay. I did buy the Radio Master GX12 as well, just in case I went for ELRS or if I end up switching to Crossfire. Also, let me know in the comments, which do you fly? Crossfire or ELRS and what radio do you use? Drop it in the comments. Now, let's get building. Yeah. Well, let's, let me get building. <laughs> so, first step is very simple. We need just to assemble the frame, like the base, base plate and the arc. Should I look for the instructions? No, no. Be a man. <laughs> I'm actually glad I built this. Not because it was easy, but because it wasn't. If this is your first build, don't expect a quick evening project. This is a full day job if you've got all the parts ready. With experience though, I can already see this being a few hours. Oh my God. What? That's the problem. What? The power lead. They touch the standoffs and it's gonna, it's not good. Like it's gonna short. <laughs> Soldering was straightforward, and this part surprised me, having some experience gained when I was younger in school. So what do you think of this part? Am I doing all right? This part, smooth, clean? Confident. Like it's not your first build, you know? The small stuff though, that's where it slows down. The tiny components, awkward angles, and you definitely want a clamp or a third hand. One thing I learned fast is that cheap tools will punish you. So it just means I need a soldering iron. If you would like to sponsor this channel, please send me a soldering iron. And also, what do you need? <laughs> <laughs> how did that break? I don't know. How do you manage to do that? Where did you buy them? I had tools break mid-build and it kills momentum instantly. I will link everything I actually recommend down below. And screws, somehow there was never enough for the right ones. Oh, so even the long ones too. Yeah. So we need even longer ones. For a complete beginner, this is not something I'd recommend doing totally solo. YouTube videos do help, such as Sergei's channel, but there's a gap. There's no paper diagrams, there's no PDFs, and that really slows down the start. This is why I'm making this video, because it's like, if someone was building for the first time, they, they don't come across these issues. So this is kind of the reason, like, I've never built one. I knew I was gonna come across issues. And it, can you imagine how frustrating, oh, I don't have screws, I don't have these parts, and you have to buy these little extras. So this is the, the little things that people don't think of. You're going to come across a problem. There's no way that it's gonna be like, yep, plain sailing. Oh my God. You also need to think ahead, how the parts fit, where the cables run, what you need access to later, lock something in too early and then you might regret it. Once you get past the first hurdle, this is where it changes and it starts to feel like Lego. You're problem solving instead of following steps. It actually reminds me of the BB series with James May's Top Toys with Meccano, where the instructions were intentionally wrong so children can problem solve with Meccano, which led to great engineers later. And I feel this is similar with FPV. The only way I did it was like, once I sandwiched it, mm. I put one in, this screw, right? Hold it like this, put the other one in, this screw, and then I did the middle one. Don't give me problems, I need, just need this done. <laughs> that's pinching the wire there. Yeah, that's not good. Now the SpeedyB Mario 5 frame is cool, but it hasn't really been thought out. The DJI Air unit mount in particular, running the cables underneath just doesn't really work and there's no USB slot in the side pates to access Betaflight. And that feels like a miss, especially if you're running LEDs. Now, once everything was wired and mounted, we jumped into Betaflight. Ports, modes, ESC protocol, motor direction, OSD laid out, GPS rescue, the usual checklist. 
Now Betaflay is its own thing entirely and this does deserve a separate video. But for now, the best place to visit is obviously Joshua Bardwell and I'll put a link to his playlist in the description box down below. Even with all that, I'm happy how this turned out. I genuinely enjoyed the process and you can sit there, focus, play some music or a podcast and just build. It's weirdly therapeutic. The next build hopefully should go smoother, but I have to wait for some 04 Pros when they're back in stock. If you've built before, what would you tell a first timer? Okay. One week later. What do you guys think? That's looks sick. I don't yes. know. ChatGPT built it. Yeah, it's amazing. <laughs> what it, what... <laughs> I think for the ChatGPT, it's like a, it's a really nice one. So Genuine, uh, now you yeah, can yeah, decide what you're gonna do next with your drone. If you're gonna do some uh, uh, concrete bundle like this, you probably need to make some changes for your antenna holder, like because this is gonna be broken very fast. Uh, yeah, so you, just it's better to know. change it. Well, that's the main point, I guess. Ah. Or probably because your battery is kind of back yeah. here. So it's better to change this connector and put it like here, or maybe on front. So the battery is going to be on the center. Okay. We could do that as maybe as a part two video or maybe do another video with AI building, but maybe long range or do we do AI versus Sergey? <laughs> as you build uh, drones i want to say thanks by the way as well and check out sergey's channel i will put it a link in the description box down below he builds a lot of drones that's all you do really isn't it yeah that's my passion and your latest one was a cinema yeah and i'm gonna actually be reviewing that hopefully when you come back yeah from yeah, russia yeah. so i'll review the cine lifter in 2026 thanks sergey hopefully we'll build some more in the future together for sure yeah <laughs> jesus i think we're gonna get flying with someone someone loses a finger Oh man, oh Now for the maiden flight, we didn't exactly have the best weather, but I needed to put this into the video anyway, so I can see how the drone would fly after ChatGPT helped me build this drone. From my initial thoughts, the drone flies. It does a good job. I think the rates are a little bit snappy for my liking, but maybe I just need to be accustomed to this as I've been used to bind and fly quads from GEPRC. I did end up breaking some props, denting the O4 camera, flipping it over, and I have noticed that the center of gravity of the drone is more towards the rear because of the way the battery sits, especially with the tattoo batteries because they have a shorter power cable. Overall, drone does a good job, it's pretty durable. I find ELRS pretty decent as well. Obviously, I need to explore more with ELRS, but overall, I'm pretty happy with the quad. Now I'm honestly impressed because ChatGPT did help me build this drone. Yes, I'm the one that physically built it, but ChatGPT was able to gather a list of parts, maybe only able to check everything, cross-referencing that with my friend, and it turned out well. So yes, you can use ChatGPT to help build your drone. However, now that I have a little bit of experience under my belt, understanding building drones has actually opened up my mind a little bit better especially when it comes to reviewing drones in the future because now i can point things out like for instance not having access to the usb port on here which is a bit of a bummer or having the center of gravity rearwards because of the way the straps are just little things like that from building a drone literally opens up your mind things that chat gpt won't realize but that's something with experience would i let ai help me build the drone in the future i think so let me know in the comments down below what type of drone I should build next. Should it be a hybrid? Should it be a six inch, a long range quad? I don't know. And honestly, I feel 90% confident I could build another drone on my own or at least fix one. But I'm not pretending. 
I still have questions. That's what friends are for. And the FPV community really is one of the best. I need a name. What am I going to call this? Frankenstein, no? no I want to think oh, of Victor. Who is the Victoria? Victoria. If you want more behind the scenes content, creator tips and updates on everything I do, subscribe to my free weekly newsletter, Weekly Focus, link in the description. And all the parts for this build are also linked down below if you want to try this for yourself. And if you enjoyed this video, then check out why the DJI Air3S is better than the Mini 5 Pro here. Or if you want to see me test some cheap, shitty drones, then check out this video here. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one.